Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to web-based dashboards programming, module number six, where we finally connect our web application or, or whatever you want to call it, our small little test web application to the database that we already created and that we loaded up data to from our, from our laptop. Today, what we need to do is we need to start off with um, first of all, make sure your Arquitecto is up and running. Make sure your database is up and running. So I go here to my Arquitecto, and it, I have my database up and running. So there, I'm good. Right? I don't need to wake it. If you do need to wake it, over here towards the top right, you'll see a white wake button. You don't want to wake it, and it's awake, ready to go. All right. Now we're going to go to Atom, and we're going to open up our console. All right, and we're going to connect to or to Arquitecto from our uh, command prompt in Atom. And the reason we're going to do that, because remember, we connect straight. We do. There's two ways we interact with Octeto. One way is from our laptop, we connect straight into it, and we just develop using the Octeto, uh, we develop in the Octeto virtual environment, right? That serves as our development or test environment where we can do code and we can see live what's going on. The second way we interact with Octeto is that we load up all our, our local folder into GitHub Desktop, push it into GitHub Desktop, and from Octeto, we deploy our project from GitHub Desktop, and that's our production environment. That's the, basically the URL that's technically always up. We're on the free version, so that does go down from time to time if it hasn't been active for like six days or something like that. But if we were on the, the normal paid version, then that would be up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's how we interact with Octeto. That basically allows us to have a production level web application running while we will do further development. That's the beauty of how Octeto set it up for us. So we're going to go here, go to packages, platformio, ID terminal, new terminal. Bam, this comes up. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. All right, and you guys, at this point, I think you guys know the drill. First, we do Octeto login, right? And you'll see a window like this pop up in one of your browsers. You're now logged in. You can just close this. They're just informing you you're logged in. All right. And then we have to do, it's always good to run Octeto namespace. Octeto namespace is what, court, is what uh, syncs up with our Kubernetes credentials that's on our laptop. Right, that allows us to do all those cool things. Boom. And now I type in Octeto up. And you see this cool stuff happening. And I am it's now connecting me to my Octeto login space, my namespace. All right, for some of you it's a little bit faster than others. Still happening. Let me zoom a little bit. You see, it's saying pulling images. Oh, when it's saying pulling images, it, it doesn't mean uh, actual like GIF images or images like that. It means actually like settings of environments. All right, boom. I'm in. Okay, the first thing I want to do now that I'm in. Remember, for okay now for my Mac users, we have remember we, we we figured this out for our Mac users we can go directly into our our uh, virtual environment that we set up on our local computers because it interacts perfectly because they have a Linux structure on their side as well. For my PCs, we realize that you can create another virtual environment, right, using the Mac commands for Octeto, and then you can use that virtual environment every time you log in. So that's the beauty of it, right? Because that's how we, that's what we figured out together uh, during office hours. So for PCs, my PCs have an additional step in the sense that you guys should create another virtual environment once you are collected, connected into Octeto using the Mac commands and then log into that. For my Mac, for my Mac laptops and Linux users, you can, we can just use our existing one. So I'm going to go source web dash slash bin 
not being bin slash activate. And as you can see over here, it now says web dash before it, right? And I am good to go. I am now in my virtual environment, in my testing environment, I'm ready to go. Now, the next step we need to do, right? The next thing we need to do is we need to do a whole bunch of pip installs. I'm not gonna do it because I already did it. You guys need to do it. Now before, um, actually we could, it doesn't matter which order you're doing it in, but remember we also want to do pip install all dash r requirements. Because what happens is that because of our development environment goes down, it seems to lose our previous configurations. That's okay because we always keep our configurations and requirements.txt anyway, that's the beauty of it. All right, so you could do either or. You can go ahead and install your, your whatever's existing in your requirements.txt or you can install the four new packages. Yes, and you're, you heard me correct, we install, install four new packages. One of them being the package for fast API dash SQL Alchemy. It's a SQL Alchemy that connects to fast API. Now what, I keep talking about this, what is SQL Alchemy? SQL Alchemy is a pretty popular object-oriented relation, relational relationship mapper to databases, right? Its implementation is actually written in Python, so that's really cool, right? So ideally what it does is it abstracts the SQL statements from the database. I know, I know, we spent all this time and effort in BDM learning SQL statements and they're good, you're gonna need them. But for the point of application development, web application development, it's generally safer and also it's actually, uh, I don't wanna say easier, but in terms of architecture, it's more fluid using SQL Alchemy to interact with our databases. And you'll see why when we start using it, okay? You'll see why when we do it. And you'll understand what I mean by the object-oriented approach. All right, so go ahead. You want to go ahead and install these pip commands. I have them lined up for you, All right? So the first one is gonna be the SQL Alchemy. So what, is the, what are these other stuff? By the way, this one right here, took me a while to figure out, but these also, the other um, installs we're doing are basically packages that are used by fast API as well. And you'll see this concept of async in fast API. Fast API again is different from Django and Flask and these other Python frameworks in the sense that it's considered an asynchronous Python web framework, an asynchronous Python web framework as opposed to Django, which is synchronous. Why does that matter? What does that mean? In a high level, what that means is asynchronous web servers are better at allocating, re are better, basically better at managing uh, many requests to a server. Like, so if a lot of people are interacting with your website, it's much better at managing all these many, the many amount of, these many amount of people on your website. How does it, how does it do this? Well, because it's, it, it's an asynchronous, asynchronous technology that basically allows multi-threaded connections to happen all at once that are independent of one another and it doesn't overwhelm the server, right? Whereas the traditional way that Django does it and Flask does it, a connection is opened up, that connection must go back and forth, back and forth. They're not independent of one another. This takes a lot of toll on the server. This is why Fast API is, it's in the name, is uh, probably, uh, I think it's considered the fastest Python web framework. The fastest web Python web framework. And it's almost as fast as the JSON, uh, I think Node Node.js. Node.js is is the is the JavaScript JavaScript web framework, which is also popular in itself. But I'm fine sticking with the Python framework. For the record, I'm putting this putting this out on the on the web. I hate JavaScript. I hate JavaScript. I hate you, JavaScript. I will never use, never use a JavaScript, JavaScript web framework. So that's why I love Fast API because people keep saying it's almost as fast as the Node.js framework and it is Python, which is awesome. All right, which is awesome. So go ahead and do these installs. And after you do these installs, go ahead and do your pip install for um, install-r requirements. I'm gonna do that last one, obviously. The last one I'll, I'll do, just to make sure it's working correctly.
All right, there's always some sort of warning here. Yep, this is the pip install upgrade. So you can go ahead and do this upgrade too, but I think we probably in our requirements should put this command somewhere in our, because this I think also is going to happen every time to All right, everybody's happy. By the way, notice how fast it is, right? It's pretty fast. And that's because I'm not on my machine, guys. I'm on a Teto's machine, right? So that's pretty cool. So hopefully you guys got those installs, four installs. Again, they're right there. Just copy and paste it. You're ready to go. Now, we are also going to create three new Python files in our app folder. Now remember, in our app folder. In our app folder is where our app.py file is. In that same folder, you're gonna create three new files called database.py, models.py, and crud.py. Remember that. Some of you guys mess up your folder structures and it causes havoc. All right, now, database.py is gonna be the file that's gonna have the commands to connect to our database. It's gonna be pretty boring, it's just connection stuff, all right? Models.py is where we're going to use SQL Alchemy for the first time and create class objects. Now, I never taught you in BAP about classes, object-oriented programming. Shied away from that. Didn't need it. We're going to do it now. We're going to write something called classes, which are basically how you do write, develop object, or it's basically how you do object-oriented programming. You use classes in Python. So we're going to develop a class that, again, we're going to keep it, it's going to be very straightforward, very simple. Those classes are basically mimic our table structure in the database. So our table we created, we just have one salary. These classes will, these class files will basically mimic those table objects. All right? And it, it basically, those classes, this class, class objects have actually become representations. That's the beauty of how Super Alchemy works. It becomes representations of those tables. And finally, the last file, crud.py. I don't know why they call it crud. You see usually everywhere in syntax crud. You can name it. Again, you can name these files anything you want, but just, just keep track of what, what, which one is what. Crud.py is where we're going to actually write a function that interacts with that classes that we wrote in models.py. Crud.py is where we'll write the function com functions that interact with those tables, with our tables. That's where we're going to write the functions. And in our app.py files, where we're going to call those functions, okay, that's how it's going to work. Data database py connect to the database. Models.py, we write the classes, basically the table. We basically we're, we're writing the represents. We're basically writing code that represents the table to models.py. Crud.py is the functions that will inter basically our queries. If you want to think about it, it's basically where we write our queries that interact with the tables in models.py. All right, create these three new files. Now, to create new file, because we're already uh, connected with, uh, I mean, we still have to uh, install this stuff, but because of the fact we're connected to Octeto, this happens in the virtual environment. Again, it's, and it's fantastic. You simply just go here to the app folder, see? Go to the app folder right here, right click it. And here, you literally just click on say new file and bam, Right, this now because we're connected to that, it's going to ask you, you know, enter the path for new file. After that, app dot slash, just write your new file name, whatever it is. Right, new file, whatever that new file is. Be it database.py, crud.py, or models.py, right? Just like that, after that app dot slash, that app dot slash is basically showing you where it's going to be. Right, and that's how you create those three new files. Once you got those new files, let's get into the coding. All right, now the first thing. Database.database.py. All right, database.py. We got a couple imports going on here. Actually, let me just show you here in the code. So let me open it up. We got a couple imports going on here from SQL Alchemy. We've already imported. We're importing something called Create Engine. We're importing something called Declarative underscore Base. We're, we're importing something called Session Maker. All right, just go with it, people. Go with it for now. We are also creating this, again, this is a variable name. You can name it anything you want. I'm just, I'm just very specific what I named it because, again, I just go by syntax, uh, uh, common syntax that people tend to use. 
So here we, we put our database URL that is similar to what we wrote in here in our Octeto stack file with very with the slight differences if I can show you. All right. I'm obviously going to delete this, so don't mind me. All right, so in our file, we had Postgres. Here in our uh, SQL Alchemy database URL, we're going to write Postgres SQL. Postgres SQL, okay? Colon slash slash, the, pass, the username is the same, password is the same. At, again, in our Octeto stack file, we wrote Postgres. But in our database URL, we're going to write Postgres, again, SQL. SQL afterwards, all right? Colon 5432 it is the same, slash PGDP. So that's basically the two changes, here and here. It's not Postgres now, it's Postgres SQL, right? Other than that, everything else is the same. Everything else is the same. And now in line seven, we basically create a new variable called engine that takes that function create engine and passes the URL. So basically here, this basically takes the URL and says, okay, here, let's open up a connection to that, we're gonna open a connection to that database, all right? And here now, we pass that engine here into this function called session maker. And what session maker becomes, okay, I open up the connection to the database. Now here is my, um, so once you open the connection to the database, here is now your session, your current session to use that connection. All right, so there's a connection, then there's a session using that connection, right? Why is that important? You can have, we can have a connection to the base, ba database and multiple sessions using that connection. We're never going to do that, but this is the stuff that goes on. For my web engineers, all this stuff goes on. And finally, there's a, something going on here called base declarative base. What is this declarative base? What is this base object? This base object is basically going to be um, our, so in the world of object-oriented programming, it tends to be what we call our base class our base class. When we write our, our tables, our tables will be extended off of this, uh, this, this, uh, this base variable, which basically, if you want to think about it, it's basically like a template for what a table object should be. Okay, it's basically a template. Okay, so that's basically let me get rid of this, all right, good. So that's basically database.py. And again, these files, you guys can go ahead and try writing this yourself. If anything goes wrong, I load up these Python files in, uh, in modules. All right, the next file, models.py. All right, here we go now. Here we go. Models.py. Models.py from SQL Alchemy. We're importing all the different, uh, what do you want to call it, definitions and variable types we use in databases. All right, so you see I'm, I'm importing column. I'm gonna talk about defining a column in databases. Um, I'm importing different data types, right? Um, here, by the way, I should mention that we have a slight mistake in how I structured the database. I apologize for this. When we created our table, I should have never used the money data type of salary. Why? Well, one, in Postgres, money is considered an old data type. They generally not used anymore. They never got rid of it. Two, SQL Alchemy has no money data type. All right? SQL Alchemy that has no corresponding. All these data types correspond to data types and databases. There's no money in SQL Alchemy. We should have used numeric, right? And we should have used numeric, and we could define numeric to be uh, this many decimal places, right, et cetera, et cetera. So we should have used numeric. I'm sorry. In the next, I'm going to write a uh, smaller module next on how we're going to fix that, or I'll just include it in our uh, next module in the beginning, the first five minutes. I'll call, I'll call it the I'm sorry section. We have to change the column data type in our database to be a numeric, not money. Nevertheless, we're going to keep pushing on. Uh, we, can, we can fix that and deal with that later. So here I'm importing, again, my data types in the column keyword that I need right, to define my database table. To, the, the table is pretty much there, but we're still going to define it, and I'll talk about that in a second. Now, look, check, out, check this out. My second import, right, from dot .database. What is this dot .database nonsense? This is basically saying dot, 
this folder, whatever folder this file is in, this, fo fo this file, models.py, is in the app folder, database. That are it basically that database is basically saying from our database Python file we just created. That is how you can create. See, we, we like to abstract, we like to create different files that organize different parts so it, our code never becomes too insane. So here we're calling our database.py file. And what are we calling from it? We're calling the base object that we just created. See that? That's what we're calling from it. Right? And we're going to use it here now. Class, salary, because the name of our table in our database is salary, parentheses, base, colon. Now, you've always seen me use parentheses when it comes to functions. You've always seen that. In Python, it's a little funky. When you put a class keyword instead of a function, right, before something that has parentheses, that is a new class object you're making. It's a new kind of type of, think about it as a new type of data structure. This, you're defining a whole new data structure called salary. When you put the base in parentheses, what you're basically saying is, you're not calling base in the parameters. That's not what's happening. What you're doing basically, you're saying is, salary is a type of data, new data container I'm creating that is an extension or it's based off of a basic um, data, data container that base is. Base is basically our base object class, or if you want to think about it, our basic data container. Salary is an extension of that. So whatever, whatever features and parameters and whatever bells and whistles base has, salary will have them, have them as well, including everything we write below it. All right, everything we, including everything we write below it. So that's what basically is happening. This is how object oriented programming is. So this is how um, Python will know, okay, cool. This new object we're creating called salary, this is a special database type of object that connects to the database. Cool? Now, in line five, don't be fooled. These are two underscores I do. Underscore, underscore, table name, underscore, underscore, equals. This is very specific. This keyword, underscore, underscore, table name, underscore, underscore, equals, this is how you will write um, the left side. Like, it, there's no, this is no variable, you can't make any changes, that must be there. Underscore, underscore, table name, underscore, underscore, boom. Then equals, and then after that, you can write in quotes the name of your table. Again, our name of our table is gonna be salary. Now it's always good practice that whatever your table name is, your name of the object that represents that table be the same thing. Again, right? Just common sense. Um, here I shouldn't have done this. I did this and I whatever. We might just stick with it. We don't have an ID column in our salary base, and I, I did this, and it's going to cause problems. But again, I we avoid it when I call the table. But typically, it's, it's usually a good. I mean, I should have told you guys this, but basically I'm in a design table. And you guys know this from BDM. It's just a good idea to have some sort of primary key, like a simple ID column. My bad again. We should have just called it player ID. So whatever I went and created it. So the way you create it is this is the new column ID. And the data type is basically going to be the column function that we imported from here in parentheses. The first parameter is what data type it is, integer. Primary underscore true is equals true. Index equals true. Primary underscore key. Index, uh, hopefully you guys remember this from BDM. Primary key basically means that in this table, this value will be unique for every row. If you're looking for a new, unique row, use the primary key because no, the primary key, this column, means primary key equals true. That means this ID will never be repeated. Every value in there for every row will be unique. Index equals true. What that means, that means it's optimized to search the table based on this column. That's how you optimize. I mean, that's one of the basic ways to make your searches fast on large tables. My next field is the actual field you guys remember, player, column, it's a string. There's no var car here. We can use string. String will interact with var car. No problem there. It's a unique, sure. So I wrote here unique equals true. That's your unique value, so it'll never repeat. And I made this index as well. Everything else is just straight, straightforward. A field position, 
equals column string, team equals column string, and salary, see I did here column numeric, it's not gonna jive, it's not gonna understand this either. So we'll avoid it, we'll avoid it. So you go ahead, you save this, and you're good to go, guys. Here is another cool thing. Let's say that um, salary did not exist. Let's say I never created this table. Or let's say I wanna create a whole new table down here. Um, uh, let's see. Something, I mean, we could create another table. We'll, we'll do that later. But we, I could, let's say I define other function tables that don't even exist. The beauty of doing this, and this is one of the benefits, one of the benefits of SQL Alchemy, is that you can define your tables here. And if it doesn't exist in, uh, in our database, the table will be made automatically, right? Very cool. From here, you can make your tables in our Postgre database. Because it will look to connect, it will look to connect to the, data, to the tables in the database, and if it doesn't see it, it will make it. Very powerful, very wild. We don't have to worry about the create table commands. Models, PO, um, um, SQL Alchemy will take care of it. All right, so now we have our basic table structure, and this table structure is what we use to do our, our queries. This is what we use to do our queries. And that is in our CRUD file. Move it along. Right? Boom. From here, again, we're importing another variable called the sessions. And now look what I'm doing here. Again, I'm doing from dot. Dot is the current folder, app import models import models you're importing this this file now into that crud and obviously we want to do that because we are going to call that table we made so here we define a new function called define the function i'm calling is get underscore salary i should have get dot salary whatever get underscore salary and in the parentheses i am going to have a variable called db and what is this db and by the way notice how they do it here in um in a fast API Python, they use colon within the parentheses to when you're defining a certain variable, what it is. So in this case, DB is a object type session. And that session basically means again, the connection into our database. And then again, this colon is basically defined the functionality in the function. And here we just have very one simple line where we're simply returning the DB variable, which is again, rep this is now representing our, da our database session db.query you guys know what a query is db.query we're basically selecting values from a table now notice the query is not connected to the table the query is connected to the db session and then i have parentheses and then inside it i am doing calling models that file dot the class the object class in it which i have is called salary dot player so I called models dot salary, this table dot player. I'm calling a specific in that query, a specific column within a table. Why is that a big deal? Why is query abstracted away from different tables? It's because now if you have multiple tables, you can call different columns from different tables all within that query parentheses. And you define the relationships from one table to another in this models py we didn't do it right now right but i'll show you guys a little bit later how in the class definition we can define let's say we have multiple classes multiple tables we can define hey this is how this table salary is connected to this table let's say we have another table called a salary is connected to a let's say we have another table called b this is how salary connects to b this is how it connects to salary etc etc right so we can define the connections in these class objects. And this is equivalent to when we're writing the SQL statement, how we have the where clause, right? When we say, let's do a select from this table and this table, and in the where, this is how you connect the tables. We define that in these class objects. And once we define it once, we define it once, right? We come here and we simply just throw in the columns we want from all, obviously we just have one table, but we throw in all the columns we want from all these different tables. Right, remember all our tables will be in the models. So we'll do models.salary, models.a, models.b, whatever. We just put the columns in and models will know, <clears throat> the definition of these tables will know how 
all these columns are that we select are connected, if they're not connected properly, they'll be an error. But if we connect it properly, they'll know how we're connected and it'll give us those values accordingly. Very, very wild. So basically, it's like we're doing the where clause once between all our tables, and we just keep using it over and over again. And that dot all that basically afterwards basically mean, hey, just give us all the rows. Because maybe we want, I don't know, the first row, maybe we want the last row, maybe we just want like the first five rows. Dot all basically says, hey, give us everything. All right. Now, and the reason we write separate functions here, because in the app folder, in our app file, so now we're done with CRUD PY, and now we have to bring it together in our app file. Oh, I, have, I think I have this twice, sorry. All right, and then we can finally go to our app file that we need to update. All right, in our app file, we keep it as straightforward as possible, right? We write more one function, and we call that function wherever we need to, right? Because remember, we always want to separate our functions that interact with the browser here, separate from our functions that could interact with the database here. That's the logic, right? That's the logic. We want to keep everything nice and organized in its own place. Nice and organized in our own place. So here's the app file now, guys. Obviously, we're doing a couple of things. We're adding a new functionality called depends. Very, very powerful function. Uh, here, I'm importing my session variable again. Again, I'm doing from dot. Dot means this folder, the app folder that it's in. Import CRUD. Import from the CRUD file, our function. Import models, our model definition from the models file. All right. Uh, I don't know. We, we technically didn't need that, but whatever. I'm important anyway. The next from, we're doing from now directly um, the database, our database file. We're now importing our engine that we defined, our engine variable. Let me go back here. Remember this we defined? We're calling that now. And our session local, we're calling that now as well. All going into the app file. See that? We got those variables now. Now, models. Oh, that's, this is why we call it. Excellent. Models dot base. There's no base here. Where did I get this base from? Right there. This base. Right there. Models dot base met dot metadata dot create underscore all bind equals engine. All right. Bam. Bam. We're binding now our models. What are, we, what are we doing basically? We're binding, basically we're, we're, this whole create all and this bind equals engine, what's happening? It's taking everything we defined, all the tables we defined in our models file and it's now connecting that. Well, well, one, if it doesn't exist, it's creating that in the database and, we're, and then it's creating it and connecting it to our class objects. And for the tables that do exist, they're just making the connection. That's what's happening there. App equals fast API, that was from before. All right, that's our app uh, main application file. And now we create this new function here from line 10 to 15. All right, get underscore DB. What the hell is this? Well, this get DB is basically all about just getting your local session from DB. DB now equals session local. It's gonna be our vari variable DB that again connects to our database. And now we have this concept called try finally. Try yield DB, finally db.close, what is all this happening? This is part of the asynchronous nature of our web application. All right, this is our, this is our asynchronous nature of our web application. Basically, when the web application is up, they'll have a DB set a connection ready to go, an asynchronous DB connection ready to go. And when finally an application, uh, when a request comes in and it needs to be used, it gets that DB connection. When it doesn't need it, it yields. It just sits there and holds it. When the web application connection is finally done, it's out. It closes, it logs off, it closes the connection. This is important in web application. I can tell you guys a story about <laughs> my, uh, when I was first in Merrill Lynch, me and a bunch of my uh, co compadres, we were doing, messing around with the database, production level database. We, uh, our first week at Merrill Lynch, the production level database, we kind of, uh, I don't say we crashed it. We, we kind of crashed it. Yeah, we did crash it. We crashed it.
because we kept, we opened up so many database connections and we weren't closing it. And so the database became overwhelmed with all these connections and they had to restart the database server. Uh, the dude was, the DB admin guy was pissed. The um, DB admin guy was pissed. Our managers kind of impressed at how we were able to open up so many <laughs> database connections to a production level database and it wasn't able to manage it. We actually learned our lesson. All right, but um, so this this is a con. It's a very important concept when you're working with databases. When you open up a connection, you gotta close that connection, right? There's a limited amount of connections a database can handle. There's one way. That's one way to hack a database. This whole get underscore db. This manages it for us. It manages it for us. This whole get db command, and it's worked. And it works in conjunction. If you jump down to line 18, if we're cheating a little bit, with this function called depends. This function called depends. This again depends works hand in hand with this function to uh, allow this database connection to be used in an asynchronous manner. In an asynchronous manner. All right. So basically, allows for um, if somebody's waiting to do a connection, wants to connect to the, let's say a web browser, like some there's somebody's goes to our website, and there's so many people on our website, and there's wait there's a wait on the connection. This right here depends, working with this getDB function, it basically sets up a nice little line, if you will, about, okay, who's next for the database connection? It'll create, I guess it'll create many of them, depending on how, that though, the, the configuration behind the scenes, but it'll, have, but it'll allocate those database connections in an orderly manner, in an orderly manner that, allow, that allows the database to never get overwhelmed. Hence the power of asynchronous databases. And this, fee, and the way it, and, and because, it has this organized line uh, feature, right? Where one resource is not dependent on the other resource, right? Every resource, when something connection gets open, it goes to the next guy. Connection gets open, it goes to the next guy. It doesn't have to be actively managed. This allows databases to, uh, I mean, this basically allows web applications to be much faster. And it allows database, these web application servers to not get overwhelmed. Again, very powerful feature. At your guys' level, this really this stuff doesn't matter, but there's a reason why I chose Fast API, and I keep trying to stress that point. All right, so here we know this part. This basically this root right here is basically you know our main domain, whatever that we. If we own the domain www.icecream.com, this that slash would represent icecream.com. All right, and here we have our welcome function. So we change our welcome function to now have again this DB variable that is basically our session that is gonna equal dp's get underscore db. Again, it's, it's basically getting this session from here, right? And it's basically, again, it's using this fun this depends function, this get underscore dp function to get whatever uh, resource dp connection is available next, right, in a uh, timely manner. So whatever, we gets it here, and now we have this db connection, and that's basically our db connection. And now here what I'm going to do is I'm calling crud and I want to call from crud, my crud file, I'm going to call the get dot underscore salary, which is basically I'm calling three columns, the player column, field position column, the team column. Notice I'm not calling the salary column. If I wanted that, that would be models.salary.salary. I'm not doing it because we didn't define that column correctly. We will get an error. We need to go back and change that column to be a numeric instead of a money. So to just get around it, right, and just get all this stuff working, we're just going to ignore it. And again, I apologize for this, but we'll fix it, right? So here I'm doing crud, call the function, get salary, pass the parameters db in into it. No, that's the active co connection. And again, if you come here to crud, you'll see that in this parameter, it requires a db object to work. It needs a db object to work. Right, not just any DB object, it needs a DB object that's connected to our database. And that's basically what's happening here in our app.py. So this is now, whatever gets returned here, remember returning, we return whatever, we're returning this SQL alchemy command. So basically those three, those three columns, all the rows. It gets returned here to X and we return X, boom. We are now done with our files and our FIPS. All right, we are now done with our files and pips. Oh, I've repeated these files a lot. Okay. All right, excellent. 
All right, and now we are ready to rock. And we're gonna test this sucker out. All right, so we're already up and running. Now what do we wanna do, guys? You guys remember this. Launch our local, uh, basically our test web server. You have to do it manually, so we do python main.py. If you did everything correctly, you'll have this come up. And it's gonna ask you, my Max is gonna give you this. I think my PC is, it's http colon slash slash localhost colon 880. I think we all realize that. Copy this, find a browser. Here's my browser, here's my browser. Pass that in. Oh, look what you see. Look what you see. What are you getting back? You're getting the data from our table. You're getting the player, Das Praska. Look, it's giving the column name, the value. Column name, value. Column name, value. Next row, column name, value. Column name, value, column name, name, value. Next row. Now, again, my students, what object is coming back at you guys? What type of object? Remember from BAP? A JSON object. See that? Wasn't so crazy now, was I in BAP? And right, I was showing you guys this stuff for a reason. A JSON object comes back. Now, obviously, we have to take this JSON object and we have to put it more, make it more aesthetically pleasing or usable for whatever graphs we want to do, right? And obviously, that's the next part. That's the next stage we want to get to. But bam, we have now our web location now connecting to the database and giving back everything. All right, look at that. Look at that. All right. So that is working. All right. Now, the next step is... If this is working here, we're now good to go. The next step, guys, let me do control C to get out of this. The next step now is we want to prepare our files for uploading to GitHub. But before we do this, we need to now update our, require, our requirements.txt file. Because we installed new libraries. That means we have to update requirements.txt. Every time we do new pip installs, we have to update requirements.txt. Copy our python dash m pip freeze arrow requirements.txt command again. Put it in here. Again, make sure you're still in your virtual environment. All I did was close the web server. Still in my virtual environment. This is important. Right? You go ahead and execute this command. Right? And when you execute it, guys, you execute that command and then go here and click on, it should update requirements.txt. Go up here and click on it. And you'll notice your requirements.txt people, it's just got a whole bunch crazier now. Because those new pips use it. Mess of crazy there, guys. Mess of crazy. It's all there now. All right. That's good. We are ready to rock. We are ready to rock. Right. And by the way, look how cool this is that we can use our local IDE to develop on Octeto. We got a local database. We can connect to our database in Octeto. We got a local ID to connect to the data Octeto. Now you guys know why I chose Octeto. Hopefully, also, I mean, there's a whole, also the configuration is just so much more easier on Octeto compared to if we had to do the Docker file ourselves and all this other nonsense, right? But for those of you guys that want to work with uh, Kubernetes software, I mean, by all means, go crazy with your Docker files, learning about Docker files and uh, and then the configuration files in the Kubernetes side. All right, so our Python file is ready. So now what you want to do is you want to go to now to your GitHub desktop. Now for me, I already I got nothing going on with my GitHub desktop because I already I already did the deployment. But here I have the image. So for me, you'll notice for my GitHub desktop, I got changes here in my app file. I got these new files I need to load up. It's saying the requirements.txt. Look, it's saying all this stuff needs to be changed. Go ahead, put all those changes in. For some of you guys down here in the summary, you have to write something before you can do commit. Type in whatever you want. You just need to get get that get this thing unfrozen so you can click on commit. Commit, it gets into GitHub. Once it's into GitHub, people, what you want to do is, once it's in GitHub, you're going to go to redeploy. 
Click on redeploy right here. All right, this is going to happen. And now it's going to go and grab all these new files. I'm just going to grab your whole project again. All right, everything's really important. Everything's running. Go to my fast BI connection. Go ahead and click on my link. Boom! All right, now this is not my test environment. This is my production environment. This is my URL, guys. Fast API product on the 79 Octeto. And if you, my connection should be up for the next few days. You guys can literally go to, to my URL right here, and you guys will see this. And now we got up and running. Your production server is now connected. All right, so for module six, we are now done. We now have a web application. We have our connections. We have a basically high level way of how we connect to our databases. And now we can have a little more fun on the visual side. All right, guys? So this uh, brings to an end our module six. And our next module will address the situation where <laughs> we need to fix the data. Fix that column, and then we'll have our all our four values. And now, let's try to put. I mean, this is all great. This is all this is all cool and everything, but you know, let's try to get some. Let's try to get some little visual razzle dazzle going now. All right, guys. All right, guys. So have a uh, have a good day. And this ends our module six. And I'll see you guys in class or in the next module. All right. Bye bye, guys.